Welcome to 2017. There's a lot to be excited about in terms of tech. There's KB Lake, there's AMD's Vega uh, graphics card, there's Nvidia's GTX 1080 Ti, and most importantly, what I'm talking about today is Ryzen. So there is massive hype for Verizon. And that's even to understand because if you look at AMD's stock value, it's an all time high. It's $12, going to be even higher probably uh, when they announce Vega card. Beginning of this year, it was at $1, so huge increase. That being said, is it going to live up to the hype that we're expecting it to? And I, I think it's not really. Unfortunately, I do want AMD to do well. I do want there to be competition for Intel, but there is going to need to be a realistic expectation for what Zen can deliver. So we know from their, I guess, tech demo of the Ryzen CPU that it's going to compete with the 6900K. It seems obvious they're going to go for a budget price to performance rather than just straight up beating Intel in terms of performance. They kind of showed that their CPU will match the 6900K as opposed to beating it. One thing I did find very, very uh, interesting was that they said all their chips will be at 95 watt TDP, which is pretty significant compared to the 140 watt TDP of the 6900K. That could be very significant in terms of uh, mobile chips, in terms of low power draw, um, small form factor builds because of heating issues. And I don't think that's being talked about nearly enough because a 95 watt TDP chip that has eight cores and 16 threads is very, very impressive. That being said, there's been recently leaked results of what AMD's top of the line chips compare to the 6900K. And it's actually from those results, it seems that it's going to be closer to 6800K in terms of uh, multi-core performance than 6900K, which I think is a bit more realistic considering the price. So let's talk about the price. A lot of people are saying that AMD has delivered in terms of performance. Now they need to really price the product properly so it can sell. So let's talk about how should they price it. Well, pricing is tricky. It's not just a matter of, okay, we're going to price this so we beat Intel and then everyone's going to buy AMD, no one's going to buy Intel. It's not really the case because you got to think that Intel is going to match your pricing, right? If you price it too low so that no one buys the 6900K or no one buys, you know, the Bravo e-chips, Intel is going to be forced to lower the prices to compete, right? And, and that's not good in terms of AMD. It's good for consumers that if AMD price things lower, that Intel will have to cut their prices to match, then we get things for cheaper, which is great. But for AMD, it's not good because they lose profit, right? If they made Intel cut their prices, that means that they could have had higher prices and not have Intel cut prices and still be able to have the same, uh, sell the same amount of chips. So for AMD, they want to price the new Summit Ridge Zen chips as low as possible without making Intel have to cut prices to compete. What that is, is hard to say, but what it means is that there is no chance realistically that the new Zen chips are going to completely obsolete uh, even Skylake or Broadwell e-chips in terms of price to performance. So that you know, if you're expecting you know, there to be never a reason to buy a 6900K, probably not going to happen. Okay, so you know, now you might be asking, why doesn't Intel just price things lower intentionally anyways, right? Why not Intel just you know, lower the price of 6900K to $500, even if AMD is going to release some at 500 well, they can, and they, if they do that, they will edge out AMD in terms of sales, and they will edge out AMD in terms of money, and AMD is gonna go down the drain because they already have some financial issues, they're having very high CEO turnover rates, uh, issues in the last couple of years. So Intel definitely has the upper hand and they could probably just edge out AMD completely, like destroy AMD as a company, force them to go bankrupt if they want to. But do they want to? I don't think they do because there is this thing called anti-monopoly action uh, basically means that if you are the only company that's producing a certain product in a certain industry, then the government or whatever governing body will step in and say, hey, you can't do that because then you can gouge prices super high and consumers suffer. So if Intel, it is that AMD, AMD no longer exists, then Intel is going to face anti-monopoly actions, which means you know, it can be anywhere from being forced to sell off a subsidiary, to create a new company, uh, to AMD getting you know, f funds or stipends to keep them propped up. Which means that as, as much as AMD and Intel are enemies, they are also reliant on each other. At least Intel is reliant on AMD staying afloat so they can make money as well. Which means Intel doesn't want to edge out AMD. So they want kind of both to make money. It's kind of like a game theory kind of thing where both want to make as much money as possible without having to force the other guy to react in a negative way, which would hurt both. Which brings to my final point, which is what prices can we realistically expect from Ryzen? Well, the current 6900K prices are about $1,000 US. If Ryzen delivers the exact same performance as AMD tried to show uh, as a 6900K, then it should not be priced at 500 because if it's exact same performance as a 6900K and it's priced at $500, no one in their right minds would buy 6900K, right? I mean, why would you buy the exact same chip that costs twice as much? No one's gonna buy 6900K and Intel's gonna be like, hey, 
no one's buying a processor let's lower the price so they're gonna lower it to like 600 or 700 or something like that and then people are just gonna start buying again and the amd is gonna be like damn if i only priced it higher intel didn't have to do that then we both could have made more money does that mean it's gonna be priced higher i don't know um if it could be priced at $500 if, for example, it's not going to be the exact same as 600 k which I think is going to be the more likely scenario. I think the Blender test was very, very specific to AMD's because, again, they chose these tests, right? So they had tons of time to prepare to try to frame their CPU in the best possible way. So they probably chose a test that best showed its skills, so to speak. Realistically, though, I think the, the Summit Ridge chip is going to be less powerful than 600 k probably closer to 6800K, 6800K in terms of performance. Therefore, it does make it uh, make sense for it to be priced at 500 between the 6800K and the 6900K right now. 6800K is about, I think, $400. 6850K is $600 and 6900K is $1,000. So for it to be priced at $500 for more performance 6800K does make sense. And I think that's where, uh, realistically, we can expect Ryzen to be. So to sum up this video, let's be realistic about expectations from Zen. Uh, there's a lot of hype and I hopefully can tailor your expectations down a bit so AMD doesn't get too much flack because I, again, I want AMD to do well. I want there to be competition in the CPU market. It's great for everyone. It's great for consumers. We're going to have more options. I'm going to probably get a Zen setup when it comes out to try to test it, play around. Get me super excited. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.